Well, that gives you a good snapshot, and, and we'll go deeper and see if we can find some lessons here uh, as we go forward together. Um, this headline, last January, January 24th, was the beginning of the end for Mayor Kilpatrick, but for eight months he remained defiant. He swore he would be exon exonerated, even as we reported deeper conviction, uh, deeper uh, corruption in his office. He refused to resign even after the city council demanded that he do so. He retained an army of lawyers even as Governor Jennifer Granholm convened hearings to remove him herself. And finally, on September 5th, the mayor did come clean, and this was the front page of a 20-page special section published by the Free Press. The mayor pleaded no contest to one felony and guilty to two others involving obstruction of justice by perjury. It all began six years ago when Kilpatrick started having an affair with a top-ranking city official who reported to him the affair should not have added up to headlines because the free press is not interested, usually, in people having affairs, even public officials. But Kwame Kilpatrick didn't just have an affair. He and his lover, Chief of Staff, City Chief of Staff, Christine Beattie, fired three veteran police officers in 2003. One of them was a deputy police chief named Gary Brown. The cops had been investigating misconduct by the mayor's bodyguards and reports that the mayor's wife had beaten up a stripper at a wild party allegedly held at the mayor's mansion. The stripper, by the way, was murdered months later. Her case has never been solved. The police officers were aware of the mayor's philandering, so Beatty and Kilpatrick got rid of them. They claimed Deputy Chief Brown had simply decided to resign. The officers claimed they were unfairly fired, filed a whistleblower lawsuit, and they stuck with it for four years before the trial started. The cop's lawyer asked the mayor and B in this trial if they were lovers in an attempt to establish motives for the firing. B rolled her eyes, as you might have caught in this video. The mayor gave a speech from the witness chair. He said, there have always been strong women around me. It's absurd to think that every woman who works with a man is a whore. He said this on the witness stand. The jury didn't buy it, and on September 11, 2007, the jury awarded the cops $6.5 million. And the mayor was blown away. He claimed racism on the jury, and he vowed to never settle and to appeal. And then, a month later, he announced that after searching his soul, consulting pastors, he had decided to settle after all. Not just for the full 6.5 million the jury awarded, but for 8.4 million. Good negotiating. <laughs> the next day the free press asked why we served a Freedom of Information Act request for all documents related to the settlement. We got a simple release agreement for the 8.4 million, no details. We knew the city was stonewalling, and we were intrigued by something else. The police officer's lawyer had tried to get text messages sent and received by Kilpatrick and Beatty. He asked for the messages, and this was an open court. He asked for the messages from two periods. The first, around the time of the mayor's wife's <coughs> alleged assault on the stripper, and the second around the time, B and Kilpatrick dismissed Deputy Chief Gary Brown. The judge had okayed a subpoena to the city communications vendor, but said he wanted to look at the messages first to see if they were relevant. But they never arrived at court. Unbeknownst to the judge and the cop's lawyer, the city intimidated and confused the vendor, and the messages never did get released. And everyone basically lost track of them. So we not only wanted the city documents, we wanted to see those text messages. On January 24, 2008, we upped the ante and sued the city for all documents. The public had a right to know what was behind this, and we wanted to tell them. For the text messages, we pursued two strategies. We tried to get them through our own subpoena in the lawsuit, 
and we talked to sources. Over the years, many people had come to know of the existence of the messages and the fact that there was a battle to keep them quiet or to get them out. And nobody seemed to know what was in them. And we got them. Not through our lawsuit, but through people who believed that the whole story should come out. They asked us to keep their identities private. We haven't identified them, and we never will. We got 14,000 messages from the city pager belonging to Christine Beatty. It's four months' worth. Many were personal between her and her now ex-husband, between her and her friends and city staff, about her calendar of appointments, or gossip about city officials, <laughs> routine stuff. But several thousand were between her and the mayor, including this exchange about Gary Brown. Beatty, I'm sorry we are going through this mess because of a decision we made to fire Gary Brown. I will make sure that the next decision is much more thought out. Not regretting what was done at all, but thinking about how we can do things smarter. Mayor, true, it had to happen though. I'm all the way with that. These were in the text messages we got. Hundreds more messages involved romantic or steamy exchanges, and a couple dozen had sexually explicit language to make all of us here, and all of us worldly folks here, blush. The kind of stuff that could have been immortalized on t-shirts around the world had we chosen to publish them. 